Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Jeff Ryan. Now, I know you probably all know him, but he's been here more than once. Um, it's always a pleasure to have him here with us. Um, he does so much for our community and different programs that he's been involved in. And, um, and I've always admired how he inspires students. And I always, I don't always, but I tell the story once in a while. Our oldest daughter, and her first day at, at high school, she came home so excited. Mom, I got the greatest history teacher I ever met. <laughs> and she, she made up her mind she was going to be a history teacher on that day. And she is. So um, that was Jeff Ryan's inspiration. Um, anyway, he's here today to share with us about a new program that was started they just last summer went. Um, Jeff is the lead um, for Students Abroad um, program that is now being offered through the school. And so Jeff's going to share with us about that program, and um, which I think is a great program, cool to get kids overseas. I think the world we live in, we need young people who recognize that we're not all the same, and yet we are all the same. You know, and it, getting them overseas and in other countries is a good way to, to further that kind of education as well. So, with that, Jeff Ryan. Okay, uh, before I start talking about this, I, I just want to say uh, a couple things, first of all, about uh, Kiwanis and uh, um, the other civic organizations in, in Prescott. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the reasons why, but yesterday I was, I was down in Madison and testifying at the state capitol on some proposed legislation. And one of the things that I kept on talking about was how fortunate I am to not only teach uh, in the Prescott School District, but live in a community that understands how important it is to bring uh, varied programming to, to communities like Prescott. And, uh, you know, when I... I I was given three and a half minutes to talk, and that's difficult for me to only talk for three and a half minutes. But I would say half the time I was I was just lauding Prescott and bragging about the community. So uh, I, I do know that there are a lot of people uh, around Wisconsin that know about the work that your organization and other organizations have done, not just for First Nations, but for uh, a lot of groups. So I just want to say thank you. That I gave you a lot of a lot of props yesterday at the state capitol. Um, Okay, this uh, study abroad thing, I, I got to tell you a little bit of the backstory here. Um, hopefully all I can do is click enter and everything will work, right? Yeah, Advance it, or different. It looks like there's arrows at the bottom. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat> two years ago, well, well now, it'll be, now it'll be three years ago, Mr. Figgy, when he was first hired uh, at Prescott as the new high school principal, um, I, I wanted to sit down and have a, have a chat with him, wanted to talk with him because it was just kind of a casual hello, nice to meet you, so on and so forth, and I wanted to have a sit-down conversation. Uh, and I want to know if he was a, because I knew he was a social studies teacher in Richmond, and I want to know if he was a world history guy or a U.S. history guy. And he's a world history guy, whatever. So um, <laughs> so we were talking, and I said, well, I, I, I'm guessing then. He said, have you been overseas? And he said, 11 times. I said, what, 11 times? I said, you're not even 40 years old. You've been to Europe or overseas 11 times? He says, yeah, student travel. I said, oh, and then he told me all the places that he'd been. And then he said to me, well, who's your study abroad coordinator uh, in Prescott? Now, years ago, Prescott did have, I know Schubert did have Spanish teachers who would take students abroad, but there had, it had been a while since there had been one. And Mr. Figge asked me, he said, who's your study abroad coordinator? And I says, well, we don't have one. He said, would you like to be it? I said, sure. So that's how, that's how that happened. And uh, became interested and uh, had a couple meetings. And lo and behold, uh, this is what came of it. Uh, this past July, uh, we went to three places, nine days. Uh, and uh, it was an incredible trip. And before I start, uh, clicking through, um, you know, I have an Irish last name, of course, and that's not just who I am, but when you grow up in an area where I did, Frederick, Wisconsin, where everybody's last name is S-O-N, 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 it's Norwegians and Swedes everywhere, which I am also, you play up the Irish side, of course, if your last name is Ryan. And, you know, as a history teacher, I, I think it's really, really important to know where you came from. And, uh, you know, I had uh, a person, I might get somebody 
angry at me, but that wouldn't be the first time in this town. Uh, but uh, somebody said this to me a while back, said, if you don't know where you came from or where your ancestors came from, that's really irresponsible. It's really irresponsible. I thought that was interesting, and I said, I was thinking, okay, why is it irresponsible? And then he told a couple quick stories. He said, well, think about this. Think 400 years ago. There's a 16-year-old girl who wants to meet this 17-year-old boy and wants to meet him at this park and says, the equivalent of 6 o'clock, I'd like to meet you at 6 o'clock if we could meet and talk and have a conversation. Well, the girl is there at 6 o'clock. She's waiting, waiting, waiting. The boy never shows up. So the girl leaves. The boy gets there. The girl's gone. Now, it's a good thing that boy was on time because if that boy didn't show up, I wouldn't be here. And, I, and I, that was really a powerful, powerful thing for me to think about. And then he also said this. Hundreds of years ago, we got that little baby, two weeks old, two and a half, three weeks old, born, gets sick, can't bring him to the clinic, can't give him penicillin, can't give him medicine, got to give him water, you got to take care of that little baby, take care of that baby, do the best you can. The baby dies, I don't exist. Mom and dad did a great job with that baby, the baby survives, I exist. So that made sense to me. So I think we owe it to our ancestors to remember where we came from. Everybody wants to be remembered and our ancestors deserve that. So when I talk about study abroad, I said, most of us here in this part of the world, we have, or this region of the United States, have relatives here, as I do. We literally have relatives there. And for me, it was really powerful to be in the Republic of Ireland for that reason. So again, I don't know if that makes any sense. That's part of the, the motivation for um, you know, justifying uh, such a trip. Uh, so. We had a couple of informational meetings. Uh, in the end, uh, there were 13 high school students who signed up to go on the trip. And I think initially they were like 30 or 35. Uh, and then, of course, they found out the price tag. And, you know, and that's going to happen. You know that's going to happen. Um, 13 students did end up going. I was one chaperone. And Ms. Bonholz, um was the other English teacher. Uh, and we traveled with, when we got to Ireland, uh, our tour was with a, a, a school from Los Angeles, uh, Alhambra High School, right in the middle of Los Angeles. And I, it was about 30 students, and I think this is important, they're all Hispanic, all of them. And I, I, that also added to the experience. So one of the things students have been able to do, of course, is maintain friendships and connections, and I too with the teachers who were also uh, part of this trip with the students from uh, um, Los Angeles. Oops. So that's the group um, on the far right. Um, he's the social studies teacher. Um, and uh, again, it was a group of about 40 people. And uh, you know, we got to know each other really, really well by the, the last two or three days. And it was, it was, uh, it, it was neat to see how, how the group early on, you know, kind of trying to figure out, okay, what, what's, this, what's this whole dynamic going to be like? But by the end of the day, it was by the end of the week, end of the nine days, uh, it was really a neat thing. So that's the group. That's the group that went. Now, how many people have been to Europe? Okay, how many people have been to Ireland? Okay, uh, again, of course, like I said, I'd never been. The first place we went to, uh, and again, I'm not going <laughs> to kind of hesitate because I don't want to show you a bunch of slides because it reminds me of growing up when Dad would say, let's watch slides tonight, and we'd watch two hours, two and a half hours worth of slides. Uh, you know, it was okay when you were little, but when you're seven, come on, we're watching slides tonight. Um, so I don't want to, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, but the first place that we stayed at was this uh, little community called Tralee, Ireland, actually the home of 
I don't know if any of you are track people, uh, Roger Bannister, the first man to run a sub four minute mile. I don't know if anybody's heard of Roger Bannister. There's a big monument to Roger Bannister, a lot of references to him in the town. Um, I, I just, I could not believe how narrow the streets were. It's just unbelievable. And there's no way in the world, if I go back, which I probably will, I will never drive. There's no way I wouldn't. I know people who have, and good for you if you're brave enough to do that. Because it seemed like when we were in this bus that you could literally stick your hand out and scrape your knuckles against the brick. I mean, just everything is so, so closed in. Uh, it was just really, really obvious. And again, ask the question why that is. Well, you know, these are old carriage roads where horses and buggies went. They just paved over the top of them. They became roads. So, uh, um, Interesting. I just couldn't believe how close everything was. So this is uh, Tralee, the first place that we stayed. Now, <laughs> I, I don't consider myself a, a very fancy person, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes I, if, if if I go to a place that's too posh, I really get uncomfortable and I feel out of my element. The hotels that we stayed in um, throughout the duration were really nice. This one was really nice. I know if I ever went over to Ireland on my own, there's no way in the world I would ever been able to afford to stay here. And in fact, I couldn't believe it when we walked in here. And I was thinking, as I walked in, there should have been somebody standing behind me with one of those spray spritzes to get rid of the smell because man, there were people that were there that were dressed to the nines and it just really was an impressive place because you always hear some horror stories of people who travel to other parts of the world uh, and they say that their accommodations aren't very good sometimes or they're average at best. This was over the top. This was in Kilkenny, which is a beautiful, beautiful uh, town, beautiful city. Uh, this over here on the right, there's a courtyard in the hotel. It's just unbelievable. Um, it almost looked fake, it was so beautiful, uh, the place that we stayed at. On the left, um, you see uh, Miss uh, Spanholz, uh, Umar Yusufu. Uh, he was our tour director. He's from Liverpool. And uh, Charlie Canfield, Connor Hintz, and Cora Bechet. Uh, we were uh, on our way uh, to see where Shakespeare was buried. And this particular day it was 101 degrees. It was the hottest day in the in recorded history in London. And we were there. <laughs> Grabbed a couple newspapers and made sure they had 101 degrees there. Um, but uh, our, our tour guide, he was just absolutely, absolutely tremendous. Uh, and he works for the company EF, and I'll pass this around here in a second. Uh, and he had been doing tours for about six or seven years. And one of the things that was really, really remarkable about Umar, and he and I communicate a lot now, I can imagine the circle of friends that he has. At the end, the last day there as we were driving back to the hotel from London, it was about a two hour ride in the coach. And for all 13 kids from Prescott, he made about a three, four minute statement about each kid and what he was impressed about and what he'll always remember about Cora Bechet, what he'll always remember. What con it was just incredible. And there were, there were a lot of watery eyes as he was talking too. It was really, really impressive. That was, if you were to ask Tanya Spanos about that too, she'll say, I cannot believe how he was able to do that. It was just incredible. Um, yeah, and he's a person who is, whose paths I hope I, I cross again. So he was our tour guide, just was outstanding. Um, Blarney Castle, I wasn't gonna stand in line for four hours and uh, kiss the Blarney Stone. There were, a lot, there were Prescott kids who did. And of course, there's a lot of urban legends about people going up there and go, urinating on the stone, and that's not true. But of course, there's, there's, there's stories about that. So there were, some, there were some kids who did go up there. I did not. Um, there's a reason why of Olivia and Sophia Liebach, and uh, this is in the hotel that we were staying at Kilkenny, and I took the picture right after I, after I, after I told her this. Um, we were about ready to leave, and she was just wolfing down the sausage. 
Okay? And of course, you, you, and let's be honest, no, the Irish really and the British are not known for their cuisine. I mean, fish and chips, wow. Um, shepherd's pie, wow. I mean, it's just you know, steamed tomatoes in the morning. I mean, you know, just baked beans in the morning. I mean, just not something like, ooh, I want to go eat fancy and go to London and eat. Uh, well, you're not going to eat English food if you're going to go eat fancy in London. But uh, so anyway, I was sitting at her table and I said, man, you really like those sausages, don't you? Said, yeah, they're really good. And she had had about five, six or seven of them. I was like, wow. And I said, you know that blood sausage? And she said, what? Blood sausage? You're kidding me. I said, no, it's, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I took the picture right after I told her. It was blood sausage, I took that picture. So she didn't have any, any more of the rest of the time that we were, we were there. So I thought that was kind of funny. She says, Mr. Ryan, that's me. And I said, what do you mean? But it's, it's part of the story, part of the anecdote. Uh, the only thing that was disappointing, uh, the first day we were there, the Ring of Kerry, I don't know if anybody, again, those who have been to Ireland, it's just absolutely spectacular. The scenery is supposed to be wonderful. It was cloudy and misty that day. It really stunk. It was the only day that w w was, well, a bummer for me because, you know, my brothers, I had two brothers who had been to Ireland and they talked about, you will not believe the Ring of Kerry, how spectacular it is. And uh, you know you got some some sense of it, but uh, the mist and the and, and the fog it just was disappointing. On the right, um, there's a big hurling monument, and of course hurling is a big sport in Ireland. Hurling's kind of like baseball, um, and it's it's big, it's big in Ireland. Uh, and uh, that big monument there, and uh, um, those people are, are are the superstar athletes in towns like Kilkenny, and it's like Kilkenny versus Tralee, and it's, it's, it's kind of a neat thing, but uh, that monument, that's uh, Lauren Corfidge, Sophie Liebach, and Olivia Liebach, and uh, God bless America, Lydia Franco, Anna Tomley, it's her name, my God, that's what happens when you get old. Um, oh, boy, I embarrassing. I, I, it's <laughs> embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing. I apologize. Sorry out there in TV land. <laughs> St. Patrick's Cathedral, um, not a Catholic church right now, Protestant church, Protestant services there. That, that was pretty spectacular to be inside there. And of course, a lot of history in that building, a lot of history in that person. Um, and again, another picture of the Blarney Castle uh, on, on the right. We were done, uh, we, we spent, what, five days in Ireland, six days in Ireland, they came across uh, the ferry uh, to Wales, and that was a four-hour ride across. Uh, and again, you always heard horror stories about people getting sick, and there were some people that, of course, the first thing they do is they go and they find a place to lay down. I didn't have any problems. It was a real, real calm day, really beautiful, and it was a really, really nice uh, four-hour trip. Um, I, I guess I was surprised at how big the ferry was and how many stories and how many places, things for people to do. Just like the airplanes. Again, I'm a person who's easily fascinating. Fascinated? Fascinating. Easily fast. Boy, that was that sounded really bad. Uh, easily fascinated. We took off from Minneapolis to Toronto and then flew from Toronto to Dublin. And that plane that we flew from Canada, I'd never been on a bigger plane in my entire life. I could not believe how huge it was, and I still don't know how those things fly. It's just incredible. It's an entire city in the air. Uh, and it was, it was spectacular. Windsor Castle, um, you have tour guides there, people are there to provide help. You have a gentleman there, guard, they have changing of the guard at Windsor Castle, that was fun to watch. Not as uh, uh, prim and proper as the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, but that was something that was kind of fun to, fun to watch and see while at Windsor Castle. Uh, the British Parliament building, and of course, uh, Downing Street, that's when Downing Street, that's the residence of the Prime Minister. And in the process, while we were there, boy, there was a lot of demonstrations, a lot of protests. Brexit, Brexit, Boris Johnson, yay, Boris Johnson, nay. A lot of that going on, a lot of it. Uh, so, um, again, it was, it was, for me, it was, pretty, uh, it, it was pretty cool to be in a situation where, you know, you see all these places on TV, but to actually be standing there was really, uh, 
impressive. Th this was my favorite place. Piccadilly Circus, right in the middle of London. I, I just loved it. I could I just sat there. You think it's fun that people watch at the Mall of America. Uh, it is, you know, when people say it's like Times Square, like New York, uh, without the skyscrapers. I've never been to New York. Uh, but this was just absolutely wonderful. I loved it. So many different types of people, uh, just performers, musicians, preachers, speakers, I mean, anything and everything. All bases are covered in Piccadilly Circus. And uh, the last night we were in London, there were several students who, wanted, who went and saw a play. And other students had the choice, either go to a play, go to the play of Miss Monholz, or you can just kind of hang out. I wanted to hang out in the circus, and uh, there were some kids who just wanted to do that too. So I just <coughs> absolutely love this, love, love this part of London. Uh, Windsor Castle, another picture with the group. Uh, and our trip uh, this summer, and uh, I'll just have you our next summer, I should say. We already have the itinerary. Need you. Uh, our itinerary for our trip to Germany, uh, Switzerland, and Austria in 2021. Uh, we have 24 people going uh, in two summers. So uh, again, I've never been to any of these places either, so that'll be an exciting uh, uh, thing for me uh, to also participate in. So um, that's all I got as far as slides are concerned. Does anybody have any questions? How yes. Free time, like when um, do the kids have on their own, or how does that work? Like, um, like when you went, when they had the choice of going to Piccadilly Circus sure. for a couple hours, do they stay right with you, or do you let them just kind of? Great question. Great question. That because that's one of the things that I, uh, of course, when you're there with 13 kids, you're responsible for all of them, and mom and dad expect you <laughs> to take care of them, as would I with any chaperone. So there were, there were times in Dublin where they had free time, structured free time during the day, where we did allow them, and again, I, I used the counsel of Mr. Figgy for this. He says, no, this, this, it works. Everybody's got cell phones now, too, which is good. Uh, and he said, what you have them do is say, okay, you go places in groups of three groups of three or four. You never travel by yourself. I think that's just a common rule anyway. But always in groups of three or four, and always during the middle of the day, not at night. Um, so yeah, there was free time in Dublin. Did our free time in London. Um, in Windsor Castle, uh, the kids would go off by themselves, and not by themselves, but in pairs. But we'd always have a predetermined meeting, meeting spot. And of course, you're always counting heads. Always counting heads. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, bad comparison, but the first time I, stu I toured Stillwater State Prison, um, when I was going through the prison, there were 13 of us, and the person was giving the tour. Each time we stopped, the tour person went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then she started talking. Next place, 1, 2, 3, always counted. So we, I did a lot of counting when I was in Europe. Okay, You always have to make sure one time um, but it wasn't a bad thing because we just stopped at a, like a, a scenic overlook and spent about a half an hour, 40 minutes outside looking at the sights and stuff. The student fell asleep and stayed in the bus. We forgot that they were in the bus. The bus didn't drive off with them, but uh, how come you didn't wake me up? Um, so, no, there, there's some free time, but it's, you know, you know, you have to use some common sense when you do that. You know, there's, the, the kids got to participate in an Irish dance workshop that was really that was fun that was that was neat to see um, some of the kids some people went on a jack the ripper tour where a tour guide went around and talked about all these places that this is where that happened this is where this happened so uh, a sheep sheep dog demonstration sheep herding mm -hmm. demonstration that was really that was fun that was really interesting so yeah there's just so many so many things to do uh, and uh, yeah, the cameras were clicking constantly. That, yes. How do students uh, enroll in this? Sign up. Is that is that uh, basically what it is? Yeah, uh, that's, uh, we, we typically we start advertising or talking about it like the first day of school or around Labor Day, and uh, we have informational meetings. 
Then we'll have another meeting where we'll invite parents, give the parents an opportunity to ask some questions. Then the third meeting is, okay, this is where you get the sticker shock. Uh, this is where you find out what the price is going to be. And I have to say this about this company, EF. Um, <laughs> when, we, when I decided, we decided to go with EF, I cannot believe how many student travel companies have contacted me since we started this. There's so many competitors out there. It's unbelievable. But again, I, I used Mr. Figge's recommendation. He always went with EF, and he really, really was happy with it with them all the time. Um, what they, they do a good job working with you. Um, they set up payment plans. Most students have payment plans where they pay monthly for over a two year period. That's typically, I would say, what three quarters of the students do. There were some where, boom, they paid the full amount. Um, I do know, and I'm not gonna mention anybody's names, but I do know uh, one and good for this child had grandma and grandpa that said this is a present for you. This is a Christmas, birthday, graduation present. Um, so there's juniors and seniors that get to go. Okay. Right? Well, if, Are they going into their junior and senior year? Yeah, typically. Yeah, we haven't gone down to eighth grade yet. Uh, but it's usually it's the ninth and tenth graders. Now it doesn't mean that an eleventh grader can't go, but again, that 11th grader will be out of school. They, they can still go. Okay. Um, so, yeah. What is the estimated cost? What is the estimated cost? Um, it's a little over four. For, yeah, for this trip, um, it's about 4200 And the trip to Ireland and England last year, I think, was 3800 or 3700 I think. I think that's... Do you need to have money, spending money as well? Yep. Yep, um, that's one of the things that uh, <clears throat> um, is always figured in, but the, the uh, not figured in the price. One of the things also, and this is something that if there's a good job, you know, you, you give tips. There's tip money, too, uh, and I collect tip money. So when we have a situation where there's a workshop, a workshop that's been given or a speaker, um, they expect tips sometimes. And then that's part of the money that I collect. That I you give you give tip money to the to the driver, the person who's driving all over the place, and it's an envelope. So I have, I have bus driver envelope with nine tips. So day one, day two, day three, and of course, in Ireland, euro, England pounds. Mm -hmm. So you had to make sure that uh, you had that separated. Um, Breakfast and dinner is provided. That's part of the cost. The only thing students have to pay for is lunch. And there were some kids who just barely didn't eat a lot. But, you know, I, well, I'll just tell you what I spend. I, I, by spending money, um, I was planning on spending a lot more. But I spent, I spent about $400. And I thought that was more than enough. I had more than enough spending money for like souvenirs and everything. Um, typically, I would say um, kids did buy souvenirs, but you know, kids, high school kids are gonna buy stupid food and stuff like that, <laughs> candy and stuff like that. And that's fine. But uh, um, you know, once you get over there, um, I, I would say it's relatively reasonable. But again, to say that it only costs what you're paying would be incorrect because there is some spending money. Typically what I've been told uh, is 10 to 20 bucks a day for spending money for lunch if you want to buy a gumball or something like that. Any other questions? I'm, I'm curious about the reaction of the students to do, do they write a paper? Do, is there a way to kind of get a feel for how they, their appreciation of the trip? Well, they gave a presentation to the board and talked about it. And, uh, um, you know, that, that's one thing we, uh, uh, we did not do. Um, I think if you were to corral any of the students, they would have nothing but glowing, uh, glowing reports. But there's a lot of time on a bus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of, lot of travel time. Uh, and if there's a downside, I suppose that would be it. But again, I'd rather do that than drive, you know. 
And so, you know, I uh, no, the kids were kids were really good, um, really really good. Mm -hmm. We would love to have you and your students come back and tell us about this trip or any of the trips. I think that would be a very interesting thing to our to our group and to our members. Sure, I can I can talk to them about that. Talk to a few of them if you're interested in that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, Jeff. Yep, thank you.